All right, good day. This is Dr. Knotts, and today I want to teach you on the subject of demonic interjects. Demonic interjects is a subject that is not readily known about by many people. It comes, scripturally, it comes from an act where a person is violated, but if they don't act according to God's standards or laws, then it gives authority for the entity to enter into the person and create a demonic stronghold. An interject will come in and take part of a person. First thing I want to do is just plainly define what an interject is. and then You can call it an introject or an interject. Um, the proper term is intro. And it's a demon or basically a fallen angel that enters into an individual through an open doorway. The doorway is created or opened by sin. Um, the study of interjects is basically a study about unholy alliances and the consequences and the effects that can arise from basically being unequally yoked or through having any type of an unholy union. Now, you notice I didn't say a voluntary unholy union, because the majority of interjects are forced upon people. Now, here's one thing you need to understand. Demons will always hide themselves. Now, a person can have strong emulations, um, and by that I mean bouts of anger, bouts of depression, bouts of greed, bouts of insanity, um, bouts of lasciviousness, bouts of lust. Those are specific sins, and whatever the name of the spirit is, that will be the sin that will follow. Because in the Hebrew, the sin, and the word sin literally is attributed to a, a demonic spirit. There are three words for devils, or fallen angels in the Old Testament. And each one depicts part of their job. Um, for instance, Sawyer depicts the one that is a dark covering to separate you from the light, light of God, to keep you from knowing the truth. And it falls in with the scriptures where it says that the God of this world blinds the minds of men that they cannot see or know the truth. So demons will hide. The true demon that has the stronghold will hide, but he will bring in six or seven others to live with him. Those are the emulations, the things that reveal themselves. And people will often pray and pray against them, but they can never get rid of them. They feel like they have victory, and then it comes back. Well, that's because that's not the one that holds the stronghold. And you see, you can pray, and those will go out of the house, and they'll wander around, but then they'll come right back, and they'll even bring more entities with them. And the reason is, is because the house is owned by the demonic stronghold entity. The Bible says, Be ye angry and sin not, neither let the sun go down upon your wrath. Do not give place, topaz, land for the devil to build a stronghold on. So if we do not deal with something before the day is done, when nighttime comes, it gives legal authority under that entity to take that part of the person and build a stronghold in it. Now, it's interesting that the scriptures say that the the demons will wander around and bring seven others worse than themselves in. Because what it does is it grows and it takes over more control within a person's life. A person, you, are basically made up of a mind, a body, a soul, a spirit, an intellect, an ability to reason, emotions. And the demonic interject will take part of any one of those, or several of those. And that's why a person can have a problem with their intellect, where they're puffed up with pride, or where they seek knowledge rather than God. So, let's go ahead and get into the study, because we live in a very demonized society today, and people have more interjects than, and than, it's incredible how many people have interjects these days. And the thing is, is they don't even know it. The interject will hide in the person. So here's a definition that I wrote on interjects uh, about 20 years ago. It's the adoption of externals 
persons or objects into the self so as to have a sense of oneness with them and to feel personally affected by what happens to them. Introjection. It comes from two words, intro or to introduce and jasir, which means to throw. So an introject is a part of the personality of the soul of an individual that is thrown into or enters, enters into another person via demonic attachment and transference. It is the result of an unholy alliance or attachment. <clears throat> now it can be either from a person or just purely demonic. For instance, if an individual rapes another individual, the demon will enter into the one that's raped. The victim, the demon, will come into to demonize. But often they will bring some of the essence and image of the one that was the perpetrator. And so it brings a little bit of that person. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 6.14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Um, also tells us in another place that uh, he who has joined himself to a harlot, the two have become one. So, the Bible is very clear when we join ourselves to something unholy or it joins itself to us, it creates a transference and a sharing. This transference will create an imbalance in life. You will become imbalanced. The yoking carries with it the following characteristics. First of all, realize that it, it literally binds together the individual with the demon or with the demon and the person that the demon used to to violate the individual. Once you are bound together, you are walking the same path. The thing lives within you. It's like a parasite that you just can't seem to get rid of. You will share the same burdens. Even if you don't want to, it will give you its desires, its burdens. I've known people that were gluttons, couldn't help themselves, would just fall to these cravings, this gnawing hunger. And it's because of a demonic interject in there. A devourer and a destroying spirit. Um, I've known people that were given over to lust or to masturbation incessantly to where they would hurt themselves. They couldn't understand, and, and the reason is they had an interject. Now you say, well, why didn't they just pray to get rid of it? Well, they did pray. But here is the key to understanding an interject. An interject divides the mind. It disassociates a part of the person. And it divides the mind and creates that memory with a part of the person's essence. It's a, in psychology, it's called a modeling system. Segregational barrier modeling system. In the Bible, it's called double mindedness. The Bible says, Let not the double minded man think they shall receive anything. It um, says, If you search for God, you have to search for him with the whole heart, and then you'll find him. You can't be divided. And what happens is the demon will divide the person's mind. And the part that's divided, they will hide. And that's the where they will build the stronghold. That's where they'll create their little piece of the earth. And what it'll do is it will then create its own pattern of emotions, its own pattern of thinking. And depending on how long it's with the person, it can actually take over more and more of them. Um, when an individual is completely separated with a fully formed personality, and it's a dominion, or a principality, but primarily a dominion, then what it's resulting in is called a doppelganger, uh, which is an East German word for double twin. So it will create a twin within the individual that is completely given over to the demon and to evil. It's a very dangerous situation to be in. Because physically, because the person wants to do what the demon does, you cannot bind them because they have authority as a person to attack you if they want. So a doppelganger can be very dangerous. <clears throat> I've encountered several in, in my career and have successfully separated them. Well, that's another story, though. The Bible tells us that two cannot walk together except they be agreed. 
Um, for instance, if a child is molested, they will hate the act that's done against them and they will have anger towards the person. And they should, but it should be dealt with properly. So what happens is the demon will separate that mind of the child, create a small child in them, it's called disassociated identity disorder, and then they will make a, a receptacle of anger and hatred, bitterness in that part. And the child will agree with the spirit. It's right to be angry. It had no right to, the person had no right to hurt them. And so they're together, they're agreed on this. And what happens though is when you agree with anything demonic, it will create what we'd call a servitude point because the demon won't be happy with just resting there. There'll be times where he erupts, where he comes to the surface. Um, I've known people that claim to be Christian, and they are. They have demonic interjects and strongholds. And then they'll go out and just get plastered and you know, with alcohol. And they'll go out and, and have relationships, one night stands. And they'll hate themselves in the morning, and they don't understand why they continually do it. It's demonic strongholds and interjects. The Bible tells us that you cannot serve two masters in Matthew 6.24. Because you'll hate the one and love the other, or else you'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon literally means the world and the things of the world. So, <clears throat> understand that I used to explain it like this. If you yoke or tie a pig and a sheep together, the pig will drag that sheep all over the field. And when that sheep has finally lost the ability to fight, the pig will turn around and devour the sheep. That's a true story. Pigs will do that. And when a person gets tired of fighting against the interject or the demonic stronghold in them, it will then take over and invite more demons in. You cannot have an agreement with a demonic entity. And when you do, it's called Belial. Belial literally means the spirit of false religion. It's what supersedes the Antichrist consuming an individual. What concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part is he that believeth with an infidel? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 tells us that. Belial is the god of false religion. You'll be very religious, but the power of God will be absent from your life. In other words, the devotion... His commandments are not grievous to those that love him. You'll have a lack of sincerity, a lack of love. So, when somebody has a concord with Belial, it means they've come into agreement. We're to have no part with an infidel or an unbeliever. And um, <clears throat> the word for infidel or unbeliever here is apistes. And it means somebody that will not commit to God. So we're not to be yoked to anything or anyone that will not commit to God. A demonic stronghold where a person's disassociated, they often are tired of the demon. And when I reach them by counseling the person, I'll bring them up in their mind and they can see them. That part will often want to get rid of that demon. It's tired of being controlled and it hates being angry. It wants to release that burden. It wants to forgive, which is the godly thing, but the demon won't let it. And what's worse is the demon's a dark covering over it. He blinds the mind of the individual so they cannot know that they have a split part. <clears throat> but any time a child is hurt, molested, neglected, prior to the age of eight, they will disassociate. Um, after the age of eight, it's usually called post-traumatic stress disorder, but it's still a segregational boundary is created with a modeling system that will encompass those emotions and feelings and create a demonic stronghold that interjects. Um, uh, sorry, I'm not feeling so good today. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So it's this idea of being unequally yoked with an entity or a person. But the problem is, is, is since you're a sheep, if you're yoked to a pig, that pig is going to be powerful. He's going to want to drag you around. He's going to want to manipulate and control you. So... An interject can have a very serious effect within an individual. For instance, the Bible tells us about the woman that took a little leaven and mixed it into a lump until the whole lump become leaven. 
An interject will not be satisfied with just controlling one emotion. It will work in the person's life until it can take control of them. And one of the things it will do is it will manipulate and work with demons around you so that it will cause other people to hurt you. Um, that demon will try to ruin your life and it will have things happen that are bad to you. Because it doesn't care about your, your prosperity, it doesn't care about your happiness, it actually wants you miserable and beat down. They're completely given over to evil and negativity. And so they'll try to destroy your life that way. So it'll also work with those around you to try to, to destroy you. The Bible tells, the, tells us in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8, Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So it's our responsibility to stand up. If we see something wrong in our life, <clears throat> it's our responsibility to seek to be delivered from it. If you've prayed for something to get rid of it and it doesn't seem to be working, pray and ask God, say, Lord, search through me, see if there be any hidden thing or anything unclean. Lord, search and tell me if I have any disassociated memories or parts. Reveal them to me so I can pray with them and pull the wedge out of my conscience to restore them to me. Make us one again. Give me a single mind, single heart, soul, and spirit, single intellect, single emotions, single reasoning ability, so that I can serve you with my whole heart. Um, interjects come into a person through a number of ways, but it's always through an unholy attachment tie or article. If a person's molested, if they're raped, if they're insulted, assaulted, those things that get into our mind or affect our body open the doorway for the demon to come in. So sexual ties is one way that demonic interjects come in. Any type of sexual activity joins you to the person. If it's not in God's will, it opens up a doorway and a demon will come in. Psychological ties, by believing false things, things that are not true, for instance, evolution, or in world peace, you know, if you, if you believe in world peace, that sounds like a good thing, but the Bible tells us that there will be no peace until Jesus returns. Of course, the Antichrist is going to promise it to people. If you believe all religions are the same, or it's okay to to worship this God or that God, or to accept others, you're wrong. You have to stand for the truth of Jesus Christ. You can't compromise. You can't be friends with somebody that's not a Christian, because that's being unequally yoked. And you say, well, Pastor Tom, that's not being right. Yes, it is. See, you have the joy of the Lord as your strength. They don't. They need what you have. They don't need to stay where they're at. And by the way, the worst thing in the world you could ever do to somebody is be their friend and not lead them to Christ. You have to lead them to Christ and then they can be your friend. This is Dr. Buster. He's my buddy. He worries about me. Familiar ties, which are family ties. It's hard to choose God over your family, but you know what? The Bible tells all the disciples, said, Lord, we've left everything. Family, friends, homes. And Jesus told him, he says, listen, you haven't left anything that you'll not receive a hundredfold in this world. And you say, what does that mean, Pastor Tom? You may have to separate from your family if they won't accept Christ. But you get a bigger family in the church of God. Brothers and sisters that truly love you. True Christians do love one another. Religious ties. There's many people that preach today. Uh, these mega churches are mega because they're associated with the God of this world. If you're in a mega church, it's because you're listening to a, a speaker that's compromised. You've joined to the spirit of this world. Associational ties. Those are people that you're associated with, mostly friends. Administrational ties. Work. Now, Joseph was literally over all the businesses of Egypt. But when you're in the work and it becomes your friend. 
or the people there that are violating God's word become your friend, then it opens the doorway. Business ties, financial ties, even receiving money from somebody will open the doorway. In witchcraft, sorcery, demonism, satanic kingdom, satanic worshipers, Satan worshipers, bards, uh, ovates are very good about this. They'll give a gift to somebody so they can curse them. Same thing with druids. People think druids are such nice people. I was a druid. And I'm going to tell you something. They're very maniacal. They live according to the, the word, do what thou wilt and harm none. But just like the witches, if you do something or keep them from something they want, they, they will harm you and those you love. Because they like to, to destroy every aspect of your life. Educational ties. Education is used by the God of this world more than anything to try to destroy people. <clears throat> Musical ties. If you listen to demonic or demonically inspired music, it will get into you. Music is one of the worst ways that a person can become affected because it affects your soul and your spirit and your flesh. And many things sound good. For instance, when I was growing up, there was a song uh, by a group called Coven. They were a literal witch's coven. And they sang a song called One Tin Soldier. And it sounded beautiful. It was played in weddings. I remember churches sang it. But it's a heathen blasphemous song. It, that's, it goes like this. Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You'll be justified in the end. There won't be any trumpet blowing come the judgment day. But on the bloody morning after, one tin soldier will ride away. So it was against the Bible. But yet they sang it so beautifully that people embraced it. They didn't listen to the words. You need to listen to the words. Today we're, we're inundated with all kinds of filthy lyrics, filthy country, filthy rap, filthy hip-hop. My friend, you do not have to listen to filthy music. God can take that desire away. Also, musical ties, handlers and cult leaders and religious leaders if they are worshipped. In other words, Joel Olstein or these other people, John MacArthur, I mean, you realize these people may look like they're very godly, but if you check their background, they're sitting on tens of millions of dollars. And yet the Bible says if you see a person in need and you don't try to meet that need, how can you say the love of God is in you? Oh, they may know the Bible. Satan knows the Bible better than anyone. But why isn't their heart moved in a way to reach out? If the Christian leaders across this country pooled their money or joined together, they could completely end poverty and put everybody that's homeless in a house today. Think about that. They could end poverty in America and hunger and homelessness. But instead, they're sitting on their fortunes. So, that is about interjects. Um, the Bible tells us that we're not to be unequally yoked with anything. And I want to make this a short one, but I'll take and make some smaller videos about the various ties. Okay, so this is Dr. Nods. I pray the Lord blesses you through this. Um, because of my health, if you pray for my health, I appreciate it. I just can't counsel like I used to. Um, I try to, to help somebody every day, but but it's getting harder every day. It doesn't look like it, but this is pretty hard right here, just sitting in a chair and speaking for 10 minutes. The Lord bless you and keep you in his will. Father, I pray that you put a blessing on everyone that hears this video. Help them to understand. Teach them to walk in your ways and make them counselors of yours. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you, buddy.